Good morning, everyone. I am Mr. Rish. Thank you for joining me. Bernoulli's equation style form of differential equations needing to be solved. First order, dy over dx represents a first order. You can also look at it synonymously as this, y prime. Anyhow, our equation is this, dy over dx plus y over x is equal to xy squared. It's a Bernoulli's form. Why is it? Because you have something which looks like dy over dx plus py is equal to qy to the power of n. In the absence of that y to the power of n, just with the q here, you would be looking at your basic linear first order differential equation. But here, the presence of this factor right over here makes it a Bernoulli's form of equation. And you have to solve it accordingly. What's the first step over here? Try to convert this into the first order linear form by dividing everything by y squared. When you divide everything by y squared, you'll have y to the minus 2 dy over dx. On this side, you'll have y divided by x, y squared is equal to x because y squared is divided across. This simplifies with this by bringing in a minus 1. What do you do now? You have to think back to those two substitutions which come into play down the road. One is z is always equal to y to the power 1 minus n. Don't worry why that works. Just understand that that's how you do it. What is n? n is right over here, your 2. You'll do y to the power of 1 minus 2, which is y to the minus 1. Now you do the derivative of both of these, dz over dx is equal to the derivative of this using the power rule, minus y to the minus 2 dy over dx. These items will come later on. But what do you do next? This item right here, minus, this little coefficient you're seeing, minus will affect everything over here because this minus when applied over here or the coefficient of this item when applied here, allows you to bring in these substitutions momentarily. When you do this, you get minus y to the minus two dy over dx minus y to the power of minus one over x equals minus x. Now, the substitutions will come into play. Look, you have dz over dx is equal to all of this. All of this is very similar to just dz over dx. This item here is exactly equal to that. Wherever you see y to the minus 1, you can squeeze in a z, so you have a z over x is equal to minus x. Now you have your linear form. The Bernoulli's form has been converted to the linear form, so now from this point you can do your integration factor item determination, e exponent p dx. What is p over here? It's a coefficient over here. You're seeing this 1 and this 1 over x. That's your coefficient. e to the power of integral of minus 1 over x dx, which is what? e to the minus ln x, which is e to the ln x to the power of minus 1, which using the laws of logarithms and properties of logarithms, all of that is equal to 1 over x. Now, what I do over here is I erase everything here because I need space. And I cannot forget the crucial fact that that substitution, which was z is equal to y to the minus 1, will come in at the end. Remember, we have the z over here. This z is equal to y to the minus 1. We'll bring it in at the end. z, y to the power of minus 1. Anyhow, 1 over x will apply across this item right here. Across your linear form. You have minus z over x is equal to minus x. Now you multiply everything here with 1 over x. This is your linear form. Your first order differential equation linear form. Which has been derived using the integrating factor technique now. 1 over x across is 1 over x dz over dx minus z over x squared is equal to minus 1. This right here comes from the implicit differentiation of what two items. It's not hard using the product rule. It's this and this, z over x. If you do z over x using the product rule, implicitly derived with regards to z, you'll get exactly that, is equal to minus 1. Bring in the integral forms. These integral form over here with this, derivative cancel each other out. So you are looking at z over x is equal to the anti-derivative determined from minus 1 dx integral, which is what? It's minus x plus z. z is equal to minus x squared plus cx. But z all along is now equal to y to the minus 1. y to the minus 1 is equal to minus x squared plus cx. You can stop right here if you want, or you can say 1 over y is equal to minus x squared plus cx, or you can say this, y is equal to minus x squared plus cx, and just transpose that minus 1 right over here, and all of these are good forms. So this right here is a good answer, this here is a good answer, or you can do 1 over y is equal to all of that, and that would be a good answer. But this Bernoulli's form equation has been solved. 
If this were your differential equation, the function for which it is associated with is this or this. I think we'll look at one more question in this particular video and then that'll be it for it. But you can see how the techniques are coming across. You have the Bernoulli style of equation which gets transformed into the linear form from which then you do the integrating factor technique. At the beginning you have to jumpstart everything with as you see these substitutions with regards to the z variable. Here's our second and last question. Some student had emailed me this question because they wanted to see it solved so I'm including it in this video. I don't know where they got this question from but they sent it to me an email and I'm solving it and I told them I'll do it in this video and here it is. You have dy over dx plus y is equal to y to the power 4 e to the exponent x. Let me make this clear so it looks like exponential function over there and that's what you have over here. Look right here when you're looking at it you have dy over dx plus py is equal to q but y to the power of n. What's your y to the power of n item? It's this. You have to convert this into your linear form which will be py equals q. The y to the n has to disappear but how do you do it? You have to look here at your question and find that y to the n item and it stands out. It's this y to the 4. You divide everything by y to the 4, 1 over y to the 4. When you do it, you get y to the minus 4 dy over dx plus you'll have y to the minus 3 is equal to e to the x. It's better to keep the exponent here in the top in the numerator and bring in the negative just for the purposes of being able to make your z substitutions. From here, what do you do next? Your z substitution. z is always equal to y to the 1 minus n. What's this n? n is exactly what you see here. y to the 1 minus 4, which is minus 3. Then you do the derivative of all of this. dz over dx is equal to the derivative of this power rule. Minus 3y exponent minus 4 dy over dx. But now we have come to this point. This item right here, this coefficient here will uh, multiply across. It will multiply across because then it will allow you to make the substitution for z and dz or dx and you'll see it. When you multiply minus 3, you have minus 3y to the minus 4 dy over dx minus 3y to the minus 3 is equal to minus 3 e to the x. And now these substitutions stand right out. You have this which is equal to dz or dx. You have minus 3, y to the minus 3 is equal to z, and there it is, minus 3 e to the x. Now what do you do? Well, here is your linear form derived. dy or dx plus py is equal to q. You have pluses and minuses, you have z's, but imagine it was y, but it's your linear form. Now you bring in your integration factor determination e, exponent integral of this item, your p value, minus 3 dx, which you know is e to the exponent minus 3x. Remember, when you're doing your integration factor determination, when you do your integral antiderivative, do not bring a constant of integration. It's not brought in for this specific step. This e to the minus 3x will now multiply all across here, e to the minus 3x. And I'm going to bring right here my final substitution, which will be z is equal to y to the minus 3. I will erase all of that. We have enough space here to finish everything. Let's apply this across. We have e to the minus 3x dz over dx minus 3e to the minus 3x z is equal to minus 3 well we have e to the minus 3x multiplying with e to the x and you know you're going to get e to the minus 2x properties of exponents or laws of exponents this comes here from the implicit differentiation of two items remember that determination of this you look for this and you look for this item and you combine them together and if you were to do product rule and implicitly derive the derivative of this you'll end up exactly with that item right here on the left hand side minus 3 e to the minus 2x now you have to do just the integral of this and it's not hard it's exponential function these cancel out z e to the minus 3x is equal to well you have a minus 3 the antiderivative of this is ez minus 2x divided by minus 2 plus c remember integral of e to the ax dx is always equal to e to the ax over a plus c that's the template i'm utilizing for that antiderivative determination from here i can cancel out these negatives you know you can have a 3 over 2 i can take this e to the minus 3x on the other side and utilizing the laws of exponents it will impact with e to the minus 2x you'll have 1 over e to the minus x or you can say 3 over 2 e to the positive x 
plus c divided by e to the minus 3x, which you can say is e to the positive 3x. And I can erase this part right over here. So that's what I have so far. 3 over 2 e exponent x plus c e exponent 3x. But what was z equal to? It was equal to y to the minus 3. So why don't I bring it in? y to the minus 3. If you want, you can stop right over here. Or you can take this minus on the other side and hit everything with that negative 1 exponent if you want. Or you know what you can do is do this 1 over y cube is equal to 3 over 2 e to the x plus c e to the 3x and this can serve as a very good answer and it would be right. So this right here represents the equation or the function for which this specific differential equation is true dy over dx plus y equals y to the power of 4 e to the x all representing and reminiscent of a Bernoulli's equation form for which you have utilized this series of steps to help determine the function for which it's true. And that's it for this particular video. Now you know that this style of differential equations, although we are looking at first order, is slightly difficult, but with a little practice, these steps become routine. Remember, you're converting the Bernoulli's form into a linear form, and then from the linear form, you're, you're utilizing the integration factor technique. At the end, just remember always to resubstitute your z for what it represented and you make everything in terms of y's and x's and you eliminate the z from the picture. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.